but the, look, the Golden Gloves, man. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of politics in boxing. We and we were talking about Golden Gloves, Olympics, and all that stuff. Uh, the, the, those those committees that they're very corrupt, and there's a lot of you know, a lot of shenanigans going on with that. Um, and I think both may have lost their shine a little bit, right? I don't think it's as important to fighters nowadays to go go through those ranks. But Golden Gloves still means something to a lot of people. Like it's just something about having that that jewelry, right? Yeah. Like like you may not make it at, you know big as a pro fighter, but if you show, hey, I was a Golden Gloves champion, that 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 yeah. holds up. That holds up. Yes, Ring Kings podcast is back. What's going on, everybody? It's been about uh, well, it's it's been a little over a week since we dropped something uh, on this channel. Uh, if you haven't checked it out already, check out our first installment of sparring sessions featuring B right to uh, to the right oh, of me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, discussing uh, why there are so many belts in boxing. Very good video. Make sure you check that out on YouTube. Also, if you are listening uh, to the audio, wherever you listen to the audio, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, all the good stuff. Stitcher, we are everywhere. You can listen to all of our episodes there. But yes, it is me, Jose, Brodney, uh, right next to me and right below me. Mr. OTR Mike, what is going on, fellas? Hey, I thought, I thought, I thought you were gonna go, and then there's a lot of dead air there. <laughs> that was weird. That was weird. B, uh, B, B you usually go first. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to add just you know, for people listening on uh, you know, like you said, Apple, Spotify, Google, good pods, wherever you're listening, uh, leave a five-star review that really yes. helps with discovery and, and pushing the show out there. So we yeah. appreciate it. Absolutely. What you got, Mikey? Yeah, for sure. Um, man, we here, man. We 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 coming with a little different um episode this time, right? This will be the first um movie review that we do, but um I'm sure they'll enjoy it because we kill everything we do. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. Yes. But before we start, look, listen, you see me and B wearing these hoodies, right? Mm-hmm. Um, OTR Mike got the heat on, so he's nice and he's nice and toasty over there. But it is the the, the temperature is dropping yeah. over here on the East Coast. Okay, it it is dropping. Um, I don't, I, I'm not a fan of it. Okay, I don't like it. But I, I gotta tell it. you, I got B loves it. I got, I gotta tell you though, these hoodies keep you nice and toasty. And if you are looking to keep yourself toasty during this fall and winter, you're looking for some winter gear. Okay. I need you to go right on over to lbhtshow.com slash shop, okay? Get you some merch over there, okay? We got some stuff over there. Look, this this little symbol that you see, if you're listening, it's it's a microphone with a fork through it. That's for our other channel, Lunch Break Hot Take, all right? This is part of the Lunch Break Hot Take Network, right, unofficially. Um, but we also have Ring Kings merch. If you look at B's, uh, what B's wearing right now, he's wearing a beanie that says Ring Kings Podcast. He also has the Ring Kings uh, hoodie on, all right? And I know Mikey has one too, I believe. So so you can go over there, get yourself something nice to, to keep you warm uh, this coming winter because winter is coming, okay? Yeah. <laughs> She's here. It's, it's cold. <laughs> I drove to work the other day without my jacket. I was like, whoo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yes, we are here to review Cradle of Champions. All right. Uh, it is streaming on Peacock. That's where we uh, I watched it. B watched it on Peacock. Uh, I'm not sure. How did you stream it, B, uh, Mikey? Was it on? Uh, Peacock as well, but it is on Prime Video. There um, you go. For, for a fee. 
for a small fee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you know, Eastry always always has those selections uh, for for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, for, for is not how, well. this is not how we're going to get screeners in the future. All right? <laughs> we, we all streamed it on Peacock. We did stream it on Peacock that. for free. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, B, uh, break down this this film real quick. Give, give, give everybody the plot of the film. Uh, I mean, you know, not not a plot so much. It's a, it's a documentary. It came yeah. out in 2017. Uh, it follows three amateur fighters, uh, James Wilkins, Titus Williams, and Nisa Rodriguez. Uh, and it's centered around the New York uh, Golden Gloves Tournament, uh, the New York Daily News Golden Gloves Tournament, um, which they kind of, you know, they talk about has produced more champions than even the the Olympics, right? That's why it's cradle of champions. Uh, you know, Ray Robinson, Muhammad Ali, you know, all these great fighters came through the Golden Gloves Tournament. Those were a couple of the guys who, who actually lost on their way as well. Yes. Uh, so, you know, it, it, people come from all over. Uh, fighters come from all over to take part and try to win those golden gloves. They give you a chain with actual golden gloves uh, on them, so it, it's pretty unique. It's it, in a, you know it's a uh, one of the long-standing traditions uh, in boxing, and so yeah, it's following these three young fighters as they're they're you know training and getting ready and then going through the tournament. It's about ten weeks. Uh, Titus Williams, you know, he was a I believe twenty-four at the time uh, and had won it several times already uh he was a three times golden gloves champion uh at the i want to say it was 130 pounds not 100 percent on that featherweight or something like that yeah uh wilkins uh kind of the same thing he he had not won it yet but he was a previous sparring partner of uh of titus williams and had moved up to his weight class and so they were kind of on a collision course uh nisa rodriguez was going for her sixth her golden sixth, gloves yeah. championship in the in the film uh she since won a couple of more but yeah just follow those those three on that on that journey yeah all right yes so um the film starts with uh i forget what's the other kid's name not not titus the one that he fight fights uh, james, wilkins. James, james wilkins yeah it starts with him james wilkins uh i mean look look they're, they're all interesting characters james though a little bit of a hot <laughs> hammer a little yeah. bit of a high head. A little bit. Right? <laughs> um, and um, look, you I mean it, it? It plays out through the um, through the film. Um, a lot of them, a, a lot of these fighters um, that that you that you see profile. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But um, uh, they start out because you know, they get in fights at school or you know, they're on the street mm-hmm. fighting, and and they get pulled into this gym and and they say, hey, you know, it keeps them off the streets and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Which is cool. Which is cool, and um, it, I mean that that gym that he was at, or was it? No, it wasn't him. It was it was uh, it was Titus's gym, I believe. They produce a lot of fighters because yeah. uh, yeah, Titus was training with with the other kid, Chris Colbert, um, who was in another documentary that we'll probably talk about one day, um, Counterpunch, All right? So um, yeah, uh, um, no, it was it was, it was just it was it was uh, interesting seeing them chronicling their journey through uh golden gloves it, it was it was kind of uh jarring to see how many fighters they kind of just kind of just push through like they process through that that whole thing and, and get them to to fight in a short amount of time for that tournament you know yeah yeah they have the hallway where they're, they're weighing everybody and then they all go and see the doctor and they're like, okay you're good good luck you know, we, you know, yeah good luck, champ, yeah here's, here's your number uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, well, like I said, there's a lot of fighters who want to be a part of it. It's a very prestigious thing. Um, you know, you talk about James Wilkins. Yeah, he he was kind of that. You know, I don't want to say cliche story, but that that story of the kid who's always kind of getting in trouble a little bit. Uh, you know, his, his his mother was on there. He said it wasn't you know that he was into drugs or, or gangs or anything like that, but he was just, a high head. He was, yeah, he was always fighting and everything. And you know, they mentioned a part of uh, you know kind of what what led him down that path a little bit, I guess, or, or just one of the things he had gone through. One of his close friends uh, actually killed herself in front of him uh, when, when he was younger. They, you know, they, they were hanging out by, uh, by a train, like a, uh, a railroad. Yeah. And she asked him to hold his bag. And, you know, he kind of made some joke about it and she put it on the ground and just kind of dove in front of the train right in front of him. Uh, and, you know, in the, in the documentary, you know, when he was talking about it, he seemed really detached from it, like kind of 
uh, and, and he mentioned something like, you know, being upset and, and, and things like that's not going to bring them back. So you just kind of, you know, you kind of deal with it and move on almost like he just kind of locked it away somewhere. And it's just like, I'm just not even going to, I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to worry about it. Just, you know, it happened, you know, it was kind of, kind of sad. Yeah. You know, when you, when you come from like humble upbringing, bringings, you know, I mean, like he, he lived in an apartment with his grandmother with like 20 other people. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, like it, like you can't afford therapy, right? Like, like yeah. a lot of these, a lot of these, 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 these communities and stuff like that. Like, you can't afford therapy for stuff like that. You have to cope however you can cope, yeah. right? And and you know the family doesn't really have time to give you that attention that you need a lot of times because they're dealing with so many things. They they're trying to keep everything together. And his grandmother, you know, kept that whole family together. And he, and he mentioned that like, yeah, she, you know, she, she held it all down. They all lived in one apartment, you know, she had a bunch of beds in a master bedroom so they can just, you know, you know, mattresses just, so they can lay down at night. Um, it, but it kept them all together and, and they're all close today. But yeah, like, you know, there, there are some survival tactics that are, uh, uh, you know, it, it's kind of brutal, but like those, those are, those are things that you got to use to, to, to cope and, and survive. And, you know, you can see how it affects him today, but you know he did what he needed to do to you know to make it this far. Yeah, and I think that's the uh, that's the interesting part about the story. Like, you know, you got Titus Williams, um, you you got James Wilkins, and like how they show their upbringing is like totally too different. You know, like Titus grew up in the church, mm-hmm. um, you know, seemed to have grown up. Um, fairly comfortable um, compared to the way James grew up. Um, and both, you know, the way I took from, and I guess the way they were trying to point it out, you know, with their, both of their upbringing, um, you got one kid, you know, in Titus who grew up in the church, nice guy. And then you got another James who grew up the way he did and then got in the fights. And, but they both kind of channeled, they're different people in the ring, right? And it, I guess it kind of I took from it that they showing that hey, you can be that nice guy, that nice kid, and still be dangerous in the ring. And it also showed that with James, that you can, you know, you can channel that that frustration and and that anger. And if you can get in control of it, you can be solid. You can you can do something good with it with being in the ring. So um, I thought that was cool how they how they played that play that out and then even even with Nisa you know showing her struggles as a, as a parent a young parent uh trying to uh, reach her dreams as well so yeah overall man it was it was it was a good story um I enjoyed it I'm a doc person so uh good choice um B um with that but yeah that's what I took from um you know the beginning of it just showing how they just how they you know and it could be kind of that cliche thing like that like you said um B yeah. you know you got Especially when there's multiple people that they're, they're, they're following, it's usually one that grew up a certain way and uh, yeah. grew up better than the other. So it kind of showed that, but I, I think they did a good way, a, a good job of um, showing that and, and pointing it out. Now, I, I want to give Nisa some some props too, um, because she seemed like she just—I mean, look, she had she had a, a kid when she was a teenager. Like, I think she was like seventeen or whatever. Um, uh, single mom she was working she put herself through i think she was in college during that time that documentary yeah. um still still uh you know raising a kid um you know holding down the gym and winning a lot of golden glove championships right and um yeah she just seemed to have like a very level head yeah. on her right like um just like you could tell like she she had a good support system and, and she was just she just had it together and she was working in a, uh, in a, a charter, a charter school. Uh, yeah. I don't know if she was teaching or, or, or what exactly there, but, you know, seemed to have a, a great relationship with the kids and, and, you know, was kind of a, a mentor slash role model for them and trying to, trying to, you know, usher them in the, in the right direction. So out of the, the three, you know, she had seemed to have everything together. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. James, like, like we mentioned, you know, he he's a bit of a hothead. We saw at multiple points during the the documentary where, you know, he just wouldn't be listening to his trainer. You know, he would be losing focus. He'd be, I mean, he body slammed somebody at one point in the ring. Uh, so he he was definitely, you know, uh, up and down. Uh, 
you know, Titus, on the other hand, you know, he, he was pretty even keeled as well, but just, you know, he, he was trained by uh, this guy, Joe Higgins or Harris. I got to hold on. Yeah. I, I forget his name, but I, one thing what he's looking at, I, I, I want to mention like um, with James, what frustrated me about him was like, like he said, he wasn't listening to his, his trainer and during the tournament, his, his trainer is telling him, look, was it, was that his father? His trainer, no, no, no. Oh, okay. Um, but he was telling them, Look, man, go to the body, right? You go to the body, this is go, this will be a short fight. And he just wouldn't do it. And his, and his trainer kept on telling him, like, Yo, I wish you just listened to me, right? Like, <laughs> he was right. like, I wish, I wish you just listen so you can make it an easy fight, but like, mm-hmm. you could tell, like, he gets he gets in this zone and he, like, he's not listening to what you're saying. Um, he just he just wants to go at it, and that's one of those things. I mean, he's a pro now, um, a solid record, ten and two. Um, but I, I just feel like more discipline is needed, and maybe you know, as his career goes on, that 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 will happen for him. He's tough, no doubt. He's tough, but you know, um, to to have a long lasting career, um, you gotta have that discipline to go along with it. You know. Yeah, uh, so I looked at Joe Higgins uh, was was Titus Williams' trainer. He was a former firefighter. Uh, yes, you know he, he was there at nine eleven. He said he, you know he was kind of digging colleagues out of the the, the rubble there. Yeah, that's uh, a sad story. Yeah, and, and he, he mentioned that he had you know a couple of, of surgeries and had you know a couple of years of, of uh, health problems following that, uh, and, and just you know talking about how he's always kind of concerned. Because, you know, people who were at ground zero, you know, a lot of them had, had died young. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, just kind of thinking, hey, you know, I could be next. You don't know. So, you know, he really kind of clung to the, the the boxing thing, the whole training and and getting those kids in the gym. Um, you know, he, I mean, he was, a, he was a pretty likable guy overall. Uh, it was it was funny to me, sort of when they were first introducing him, and they really leaned <laughs> into the uh, you know this is saving all these kids. You know, yeah. we get them who into was... the gym. Oh, there's no there's no gangs in here, no drugs in here. They can't you know, they can't say the n word in here because you know we want them to know how disgusting it is and all. And I'm just like you, like Titus was just in church, which is in, <laughs> right, right, not, right. Who know. who was the other guy that 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 owned the the, the gyms? Um. Was it was it was it was it Joe's guy or was it was it um the other, uh, the, other well, the, the the gyms were part of the New York Park system, uh, and and there was you know Joe was a, was was working on one of them. There was another guy I forget his name, uh, but he was uh, a police officer. I meant to write it down. Of, who yeah, was kind yeah. of in in charge of kind of running some, uh, some of the gyms, but he he was a, yeah he he didn't own the gyms. Um, but he was just another one of the, the guys who kind of worked there and, and ran those gyms while they were part of the yeah. park system before they got shut down. I want to write his name down because he was also in the other documentary, um, Counter Counterpunch, right? Um, and he said a lot of the same things too, right? And you know, listen, I get yes, I I think it's a good program for certain kids that that have some issues like staying out of trouble. Right, mm-hmm. it, it gives them something to focus on, um, <clears throat> release aggression that they might have. So I'm not knocking that part of it, but when they paint it as this is the their only savior, that's why I have a big issue of it, right? Because yes, a lot of those gyms were being defunded, right? Um, and it's just like, well, you're taking you're taking away their only hope. No, <laughs> that should not be their only hope. That right. shouldn't be their first, second, third, or fourth. <laughs> hope right mm-hmm. uh these needs to go these need to go into programs that can actually help them build careers yeah. right so if it's being defunded to go into it programs stem programs things like that that are going to help those communities down for it but if, if they're taking it out and taking it out of the community then yeah that's that's a major problem but boxing shouldn't be the only savior for for our our, our youth our black youth you know mostly yeah. So that that's that's the only thing about it. But in general, I have no problem. I, mean, I think I think they're they're absolutely helpful. Yeah, no, yeah. they're 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 great to have. They're great programs. But I mean, the the problem that I have with the narrative is like they still have to go home. 
you know, yes. you, they're not living in that gym. They're still going home to those neighborhoods that you're talking about. They're still living around the the drugs and the violence, and, you know, the gangs and everything. So you can you can have them in there, and it's good to, like you said, to uh, give them an outlet. Uh, and it's good to to build build the uh, you know some discipline, build those habits. But you know, when they leave there, they still got to be making the the right decisions on their own. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this though, I've 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 done a little training. A little boxing training when I was in high school, uh, you you be in the gym all day, you have no more energy when you get home. <laughs> the only the only thing you can think of is eat and sleep, right, and recover. That that would definitely kind of prioritize some of the things in your life a little bit if if you're really that committed. And I was nowhere near committed as 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 those guys are. So. Yes, yes, it, it's it's helpful in a lot of ways. I don't want to take that away, but when it's painted as this is the only hope that these, these kids have, that's what uh, really kind of just it's just it, it it makes me sick to to hear people say that because it's the same thing of the um, last chance you. It was the season where they were out in um, L.A. I want to say that community college in, in in L.A. and like the very first opening, they're talking about it. They're like, oh well, you know, this is this is the last chance for a lot of these. The, these kids man like you know they don't make it here you know who knows what happens to them and i'm like they're in college yeah. like they can they can go to class <laughs> like like you know what I'm saying like they can get an education what do you mean if they don't make it at the football program that you know they're not gonna make it in life what are you talking about yeah. you, you know like stuff like that it just really runs me the wrong way it's a cliche that's that's been overused and i hate that's used for our people uh most of the time all right but yeah, we, we kind of went off on a rant about that a little bit. But, but, <laughs> no, what were your thoughts, Mikey? No, it's true. I mean, it 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 has to start, you know, being pushed and used as a tool, right? Yeah, it is a tool to reach kids. You know what I mean? But as you guys have greatly pointed out, it's not the end all be all. I mean, and don't get me wrong, there are some kids. You might get one or two um, who, you know we'll either choose that or the streets, right? And that's what you want to avoid. But it's more of a tool to get these kids to, you know, make the right decision. Like, come on, man, channel some of that energy, come in the gym, you know, learn some discipline. This might be something that you, you know, find fun. And then it might turn into a career. But it's not, you know, it's not all in one and all eggs in one basket. It's not it's not that, yo, if I don't succeed in boxing, then I'm not gonna be anything. And and I kinda got that vibe, especially when it came to James, right? Mm-hmm. Even at the end, it was like, yo, I wonder what he's doing. Like, because he lost the golden gloves, it kinda showed him, you know, working with a kid. I don't know if that was his brother or not. Um but it kinda gave that feel like, okay, what is next what's next for him? What he doesn't have anything left. He lost what he was trying to um trying trying to win and then the only thing next for him is to turn pro and and which he ended up doing but again you guys you guys pointed that out and, and it it does happen in, in a lot of movies like that but i you know i do want to point out with coach joe you know um i i think i ended up liking him but he had a questionable moment for me in the beginning, and I think B, you kind of pointed it out. <laughs> I would have preferred him to say he did not say the N word. Yeah, he didn't say N word. I would have preferred for him to say you can't use the N word in this gym, but he, right. you know, he, he used the entire word, um, and not not the street version, but uh, right. you know, he he seemed to be good for the kids and good for what they do. Look, anybody that gives their free time to work with kids, I, you know, which I've done myself, it ain't, you know, it, it can be tiring, man, and you enjoy it, but, yeah. you know, anybody that does that, you know, I, I salute, but yeah, that was a questionable, questionable moment <laughs> for him, and I want to ask you guys, because I did look into their boxing, uh, their pro careers, but I, is, are they, is he still training, Titus, and is this Titus even active, because so t- I, said inactive. That that's the thing. He's ten and three. Uh, he lost his last fight by TKO, but that was three years ago. So uh, I just saw something say he's back. He's back. He's, he's making a comeback. He he took some time off. Okay. Uh, I saw something. Uh, uh, I want to say it was a few months ago, maybe like in May, an article that said that you know he's he's making a comeback. So he's training right now. I'm not sure if he has a fight scheduled to come up or anything like that. But I think he is looking to make a comeback. 
Yeah, was are, you, are you sure that's current? Yeah. Because there was there were there were uh, articles about that as well. Because he a, a close friend of his uh, had passed away, uh, who he mm. trained with, and he took some time off then. And people thought maybe he was going to retire, and he came back. Uh, and, and that's you know he lost his last fight in in 2019. I'm not sure if he's making another comeback. Okay, yeah, you you might be right about that. His, like his his box rack rack did say something in um. Like it had a question mark, like a TBA, but it says something. I, I want to say this month to be it's like a T, to be announced for this month, but I'm not sure how. how yeah, it says TBA uh, for the 28th of October, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. at the Amazora Concert Hall in Queens. So um, maybe then, maybe then. Yeah. Um, so you know, we'll have, to, we'll have to follow up on that. I'll have to follow up on that. Um. Yeah, and um, the other kid, he, I think he fought fairly recently too. James Wilkins. Wilkins, yeah. Um, he yeah. actually has the better pro record right now, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah like he's ten and two. Ten and two. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the 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 majority of the film kind of uh, focused on you know they're they're them getting ready, really kind of leaning into the the. The dedication and hard work that it takes to. I, I'm sorry, B. I, I just I just uh, want to point out real quick. I, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I looked up James Wilkins' box rec. His profile picture looks like a psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, 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 those are the those are the kind of vibes he's trying to put out. It's not it's not GQ in there, yeah. right? His last fight was was almost a year ago. It was it was December of, of 2021. He won by unanimous decision. Okay, I'm sorry. I cut you off. He's, he's not. He's he, he's not trying to make friends with the with the profile picture on Box Rec. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it it, it really leaned into the the dedication that it takes and the, the hard work that it takes. Um, you know, at one point, James Wilkins, uh, his trainer, took him up to Big Bear in California to get ready for the final, uh, and he was out there and he and he mentioned it. You know, he he was training with actual pro fighters at that point, and he was like, you know, that kind of pushed him to to you know, get up and, and, and put the work in because, you know, like nobody likes to get up early and go sprinting and all that stuff. Um, but, you know, it, it the actual fighting in the in the documentary, uh, you know, I mean, it was, I, I don't it, think they did, amateurs. Yeah, I, I don't think they, I, but I don't even think they did a great job in terms of just portraying it really. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it was kind of secondary. Uh, which I mean, you, you sort of expect in the in these documentaries. They're they're trying to dig into the stories, but like especially with Nisa Rodriguez, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they they showed they showed Titus and, and James Law because they ended up fighting each other in the final, and that was kind of the big you know moment of the of the film. But like with Nisa, Nisa was uh, she was dominating uh, uh, her side of the tournament, and they Boy, just was she? they just kind of glossed over it really. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they showed a couple little highlights and then they're like, yeah, it's over. Get her out of here. And Nisa wins the Golden Gloves. <laughs> and uh, so I thought they could have they could have spent uh, a bit more time with Nisa telling her story and showing her fights. Um, but overall, I mean, I thought it was a it was an entertaining documentary overall. If if a little bit, like, like I said, a little cliche. Yeah. Yeah, no, go ahead, Mikey. No, saying? no, I agree with you, B. I, I, <laughs> I would have liked to see them focus a little more on, on what they do in the ring. Um, it just kind of seemed like you know some footage that you and I probably would have shot from the from the audience <laughs> if we were there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it didn't. It was lacking that, um, and I and I do think they, you know, and I want to. We're I think we're doing a good job of making sure we we. Don't forget Nisa, but because of the way the doc was set up, it kind of makes you, you know, kind of leave her out because it, it it did seem like they didn't focus a lot on her. They didn't, and or did they didn't focus enough on her? So yeah, there were long stretches where she just wasn't. Yeah, there. you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you know, as long stretches that you didn't see her, and for somebody as dominant as she was in in such a prestigious tournament, mm-hmm. um, you know, it wasn't enough highlighted on that, but. Again, like you said, overall, I think they did a good job on telling the stories. Um, but yeah, if, if we yeah. had to be critical of it, I think it was missing that, and it wasn't showing 
enough of their action inside the ring. And then showing actually like what they could do. I mean, you know, those type of fights, you know, aren't they they're like three rounds, right? Yeah, three or four rounds. Yeah. Three or four rounds. And it's like a lot of, you know, it ain't the prettiest of, yeah. of you know, of the sport. But um, I would have liked to see actual, like, these guys getting down. And it didn't have to be in, in, in that tournament. You know, they're amateurs. So any amateur fight is showing, showing their work or whatever. Um, I was more interested in that to see. You know, we heard how good they were, right? You know, they talked about it a lot. Titus was good. Uh, James was good, up and coming. He just had that one thing looming over his head that Titus had beat him before. Um, but we didn't get to see enough of how they got to where they were. Yeah, and particularly with Titus, uh, you know, they made a they made a point uh, early and often to tell you that he he's the man. He is the man at the Golden right. Glove tournament, right? right. At in the, at that weight class, you know, he he won. I believe, like, like I said, I think it was three uh, at that point, and everybody was gunning for him. Everybody wanted to beat him. Uh, you know, they talked about how he came back after after winning it and got beat in the first round because he just kind of didn't. You know, I mean, he he he, he lost the hunger a little bit. He smelled the rose. He's hanging with you, <laughs> and, and 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 you know, so that that kind of got him to 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 rededicate himself and all that, but. They did a good job of of telling you that, not a great job of showing you that skill in the ring. One hundred percent. And with Nisa too, you know, there was one part where she was at the school and she was talking to the kids, and the kids were all excited about her having the fight and and were asking her about coming to see her at the fight, right? And you know, she had mentioned, oh, you know, it's starting at seven. I don't know if your parents will let you go, but then they never kind of really came back to it and to show the kids at the the fight watching her fight or anything like that. Uh, I thought it was just a little bit odd the way they just it just kind of seemed a little thrown like a throw in uh, with her story. So I'm I'm looking at at the d- director his biography. Bartle Bull is the director of this. Okay, uh, he only has three things on his uh um his credit here: Cradle Champions 2017, Trish Reagan Prime Time 2015, and the Missing Ingredient: What Is the Recipe for Success 2015. That's it. So mm-hmm. he, he he clearly didn't have a whole lot of experience um, when he when he did this film or she. I'm not, I'm not even sure. That's a <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say yeah. picture. Uh, I'm assuming that's a he. Um, and he hasn't done anything uh, that I can see since then. So um, yeah, maybe that shows a little bit um, in in the documentary. And again, this is you know this, this is our 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 full full movie critic uh <laughs> mm-hmm. uh nitpicking here it, it was it's a good film like I, I liked it overall but yeah there are some things that he could you know maybe done or added a little bit um to like like we said focus on the fighting a little bit more um but overall yeah i mean it's it's about an hour and a half it doesn't take up too much of your time and yeah it's, it's oh, wow. he didn't that. even direct those he's only directed cradle of of champions okay he just appeared on those other uh on those other things. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. So, so yeah. debut. Yeah, I mean it's not not the, you know, you got to find a little something in everything. So it's not the this. I think it was a good film. Um yeah. I recommend you watching it if anybody that wants to listen to us and take our, our word for it, I yeah. I would recommend that you watch it. Yeah. Um the most dramatic thing, but well, we wrap this up. The most dramatic thing was at the end, right? And uh, Titus beats um, uh, James, mm-hmm. and um, you know, James just loses it, right? Like, like he 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 breaks down, starts crying. He 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 storms out. He's knocking things over. You know, he says like, "I worked hard for it. I worked hard for it." And I feel it, man. Like I, I feel for him, but at the same time, that goes to the. You know, man, lack of discipline and lack of an awareness. You were losing, bro. Like, <laughs> I mean, now may, maybe like we didn't see the whole fight. We're seeing clips of it. Maybe, uh, maybe he did win. I don't, I don't know. But um, I mean, yeah, he he really lost it there. And then it just goes from that to him just training that little kid at the end, and then it just kind of ends, right? Yeah. So yeah, like you know, you you wish you could have seen a little bit more at the like the. After that, I, I would love to see a conversation he had with his trainer, where his trainer kind of tell him, like, "Look, this is where you, it went wrong for you. You know, this is what you need to work on, and things like that." And kind of have him reflect on that fight a little bit, right? You know, but the, look, the Golden Gloves, man. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of politics in boxing, 
we and we were talking about Golden Gloves, Olympics, and all that stuff. Uh, the, the, those those committees are they're very corrupt, and there's a lot of you know, a lot of shenanigans going on with that. Um, and I think both may have lost their shine a little bit, right? I don't think it's as important to fighters nowadays to go go through those ranks. But Golden Gloves still means something to a lot of people. Like it's just something about having that that jewelry, right? Yeah. Like like you may not make it at, you know big as a pro fighter, but if you show, hey, I was a Golden Gloves champion, that 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 yeah. holds up. That holds up. Mm-hmm. So um for man, for Nisa Rodriguez to to have eight of them, sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's something. Well, but, that, um, that, that uh, you already answered the question I had for y'all. But B, yes. Do you think he won that fight, James? Oh, James? Is. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but but like <laughs> I said, you, you you don't see much of the fight. Uh, yeah. But no, I, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, and I, I mean, the way he reacted, you know, it, it's. You see a lot of athletes react that way in, mm-hmm. in those moments, right? And and you see professional athletes who have made you know tens of millions of dollars react that way. I mean, I don't think it was really necessary to show that, especially the way they did. Like Jose said, you know, if you show that, then you also have to show the aftermath of that. Show him, you know, talking with his trainers. You know, show him calm down. Show him, you know, kind of processing the loss and and where he's where he's going to go from there. The way they 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 put it. Uh, in the film, it was just kind of like, oh, there's hothead James being a hothead again. Right, right. And, you know, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a, a, a clear tell for me that he lost that fight, because I've never seen a fighter actually win when they do this, was when he took a few shots from Titus and he did the, come on, give me some more, let's go, <laughs> right? Like, usually when you see fighters do that, because, like, they don't have an answer for what's going on there. It's like, okay, he's not hurting me, but I'm not hitting him, and I need to bait him into a fight to 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 get this going, and that almost never works. I've never seen that. I've never seen that happen. Right. Yeah. So, to me, when he did that, I think that was a uh, understanding that I gotta get a little closer to this guy, or you know, time's running out. I gotta make this a fight, fight, or I'm gonna lose this. Right. Yeah. So that you know that right there. Look, fighters. I'm I'm no. I mean, look. Don't take my advice. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a professional. I'm not training or anything like that. But I'm just saying, you, you probably don't want to do that, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Yeah. All right. So um, that's it. Um, yeah, we, we're going to be giving you some more of these these um reviews. I hope you like this. Uh, we mentioned um, uh, what was the other one? Counter Punch. <sighs> Counter Punch. Mention Counter Punch. That may not be the next one. We have a list of, of movies that we're going to be watching, documentaries and whatnot. Some of these will be documentaries. Some of these will be movies. And um, we're going to break it down like this. So if you like it, listen, um, hit that thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. Give us five stars if you're listening on uh, a podcast. Even, even uh, leave comments. In fact, um, you know, shoot us a... Um, Shoot us a tweet or something like that, or a DM at Ring Kings Pod. You can follow us on on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Ring Kings Pod. Let us know how you feel about it. Leave a comment on YouTube, like I said before. Um, and that's it. Uh, B, any any last words before we get, we get out of here? No, I mean, like I said, I thought it was overall, you know, an enjoyable watch. Uh, definitely had some issues with it, but uh, if you have Peacock, uh, definitely worth checking out. All right, Mikey. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, you know, I'm that type of person that, essentially, especially documentaries, I got to look the people up and see how they're doing currently. A little shocked at how Nisa's career is going or turned out. I'm, I'm not sure if she's act, uh, active still for as dominant as she was. But, um, you know, they all, all three of them went turn pro. Um, so, and overall, man, I, I say check it out. You know, especially if you can catch it, you know, for free ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I think um, it goes to show you, right? Because all three of these fighters, um, excellent amateur fighters, when you get to the pros, there's levels, right? Like yeah. it, it shows you just how talented these fighters are once you get to the pro level, and some of these guys that we take for granted are very good <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah they are they are very good fighters so like yes you might hear us when we're talking about some of these fights and we might you know say oh this guy isn't really 
like that. He is. It's all relative, right? It's relative to the competition. Right. Like overall, like like yes, he like like once they get to that level, they're pro pro, mm-hmm. right? They're 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 a pros pro. Um, who did Shakur Stevenson just beat the other day? Um, I, I forget how to pronounse it. Conseco. 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 Right. Yeah. Not consenso, uh, consenso, 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 yeah. yeah. I forget. How to <laughs> I can say consen- consens- consens- I, I should know this. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, it, but it's funny because when I was watching that fight, I knew when we <laughs> when it came to us covering it, <laughs> that day was going to be an issue. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. I, sh- I should, I should know this. But um, that guy, you don't want to like n- none of these amateurs just want to run up on that guy thinking that they can they can take him. He will wipe the floor with them okay yeah like he is he's up there okay he's just not on secure stevenson's love secure stevenson is an elite fighter okay that's one of those guys you get in the ring with he's just like i didn't know i ain't know human beings can move like this all right um but yeah that that's what it takes to to get there man and even if you're uh not that high up there that doesn't mean you're not a good fighter there are a lot of excellent fighters out there so um all right that's it um We'll get out of here. Oh, by the way, um, right above B, patreon.com slash LBHT show. If you like what we're doing and you want to support what we're doing, uh, that's where you can go and sign up. We got three tiers. Real quick, B, real quick, tell them about the tiers. Uh, yeah, so you have the $3 tier, which is kind of just a, a general support tier. Uh, we have the $10 tier, which will get you the custom poker uh, set that we have for our top 25 or featuring our top 25 fighters of all time. Uh, we did a five part series kind of breaking that down. It's definitely worth checking out. Uh, and then we have the $20 tier, which is a combined tier for this show, as well as our other show lunch break, hot take, which will get you uh, the poker set. It'll get you the LBHT crew coin, and it will get you into our discord channel uh, as well as the overtime show that we do every Wednesday. All right. And with that, we out of here. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will see you on the next episode. Peace out. Things like you have-